What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I break down Halo Infinite Season 2 and discuss whether it's worth playing. I analyze a new update and give you the good, the bad, and the straight up ugly. This is Marsman Gaming. Halo Infinite's Lone Wolves is 343's first attempt at a major content update for the game and has garnered some mixed reviews based on who you ask. You have one camp that, that will tell you that basically this update is horrible and a poor excuse of a content update. You have another camp that says the best thing since sliced bread and that anyone that criticizes 343 are just being haters. And then you have the rest of us who are basically in between both groups and are critical of 343 and understand that growth is still good. My goal today is to break down season two and give you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and provide you with all the information so that you can make a choice on whether this game is worth playing. So first things first, we need to talk about the good. The biggest problem that Halo Infinite had at its launch was the lack of content. And let me tell you, Halo does bring the content again. First thing, you're getting two brand new maps. First one is Catalyst, which is a arena style map based on Halo 3's Epitaph, which is honestly probably my favorite map so far. Then you're going to get Breaker, which is a new big team battle map, which is mainly used for last Spartan standing. But when you play it in the regular big team battle playlist, it's so much fun because it's condensed and mayhem is all over the place. Overall, 3 for 3 has shown that map design is actually a strong suit of theirs because every map so far, other than maybe launch site, are actually pretty good. Along with the maps, we get new cosmetics. With this new season, you get two new armor cores and a brand new battle pass with a hundred tiers of new unlocks and collectibles. The first armor court, Raksha, is unlocked through the battle pass and it kind of gives off a scavenger style of vibes where you're basically trying to gather materials and just make do with what you can do. While the second one is Eagle Strike, which seems like a World War II Fallout armor set that looks really interesting and kind of gives me that Wolfenstein vibe. Honestly, this battle pass has more cool armor unlocks than season one and even most of Halo 5. So, so far so good, 3 for 3. One of the best attachments in this battle pass is the Elite Skull armor piece, where basically it looks like you're rocking an Elite on your shoulder the entire time. The only downside is you gotta wait and unlock it all the way at the very end, but it kind of gives you the incentive to just keep playing. As well as the previous two points, we are getting brand new game modes to Halo Infinite, which is a glory be that we finally get something new to play. First things first, King of the Hill has finally made its return. King of the Hill has a brand new mechanic that is in instead of capturing the point for a certain amount of seconds, you're trying to gain the momentum and control the point completely, and it earns you a score that the first one to four wins the entire match. You're also adding in the brand new last Spartan standing, which is a combination between a massive free for all big team battle with gun game and some battle royale components to it. And later in the season, you're getting land grab, which is a combination between King of the Hill and a kind of new variation of strongholds that is going to be very interesting and I can't wait to play it. As well as these major game modes, you're getting new variants to be added to the rest of the playlists like Ninja Slayer, Vampire Ball, and others that are added into Team Slayer and Quick Play events, as well as a brand new Rumble play playlist, which is a hell of a lot of fun. This gives us a lot of new game modes, maps, and cosmetics to unlock, which gives me a lot of hope knowing that we can play it a lot of different ways, and it gives fans what they always desired for this game, which is new content. So three for three, so far so good. When there is good, there's definitely gonna be some bad. Even though I kind of mentioned the fact that there is a lot of content added, it seems as like there is not enough content added for the amount of time it took for this season to finally come out. One of the first things I noticed is that six months of time, and the only thing we have for maps wise is two new maps. In six months, you should be able to make four new maps, two for the arena and two for big team battle. I don't think I'm asking for too much here because the reality is, you already had Forge in development behind the scenes given to the community. And I can guarantee you that once Forge comes out, the community will be able to make maps in literally a week's span. So it's kind of confusing to me that we still don't have more than two maps in six months of time. Granted, these maps are great and I love both of them, but it just gets at me annoyed to say, why don't we have more than just two? Secondly, when I'm looking at the next major problem with this update, is that we still have a lack of ranked modes and they basically are holding us off from getting all the game modes for the entire season. To this day, six months in time, 
we still only have one ranked playlist to play. How is it possible that you cannot make a ranked game mode for more than just one variant? You have all the other game modes there. You have Team Slayer, you have Lone Wolves, you have Tactical Slayer, all available. Those are just the basics. And all you need to do is put on the BR, put on no radars, and guess what? You're good to go. People want to be able to have a service record that has all of their different ranks across the board. And honestly, it's kind of annoying that 3 for 3 has been unable to accomplish this small feat. For a long time, I've heard that 3 for 3 has always prioritized the pro Halo scene. But in reality is, it doesn't seem like they are. Halo Pro teams have many members that are basically focused on certain game modes of Halo. They have some people who are prioritizing free-for-all, some people who are prioritizing Slayer. And the point is, is that you're not getting any of those other playlists. It seems like they still have yet to bring in a ranked plethora of game modes, and even Halo 5 had this done. And I can guarantee you that Halo Infinite's Gameplay mechanics are way smoother and the multiplayer is just more fun to play. But the problem is, is you don't have more than one ranked game mode where people can actually try and di differentiate what they do. You should be having a ranked game mode for attrition, for slayer, king of the hill, tactical slayer, lone wolves, and arena. You should be having this for every single game mode you can possibly have. Like come on guys. You've already made the modes. You just need to add the defaults there and you're good to go. Next thing on the list is going to be the issue when it comes to store prices and earning credits through playing. Let's be honest, the store prices of this game are not the greatest. Don't get me wrong, the store prices have definitely gotten a lot better than they were in Season 1 where you're getting less of those bundles that are almost $20 in price tag. But damn, I'm still seeing bundles that are $1,200 and that is just ridiculous. In essence, a $1,200 credit purchase is the equivalent of $12 and what you're telling me three for three is that that bundle that includes a helmet a helmet attachment a color scheme for your spartan your weapon and your vehicle as well as two armor pieces is the equivalent of a hundred tier battle pass that you purchase ten dollars for that doesn't make any sense and I don't care what type of capitalism you're using that does not compute with me now I would be okay with the use of this purchasing system for the store if you had earnable credits the way that halo reach halo 5 did because in reality you don't you can't earn any credits by just playing the game you can earn credits through the battle pass which is great to see but you can only get a maximum of, of a thousand you're taking away a mechanic that was put into the game a long time ago and as much as a dumpster fire that halo 5 was as a game overall halo 5's multiplayer had an ability to earn rec points by just playing the game and you use those rec points to earn the ability to buy cards which gave you cosmetics and and also weapons you're telling me that halo 5 being as money grubbing as it was had the ability to give you ways to earn your credits the way that it did but halo infinite is doing less consumer friendly options and forcing you to only pay for things using your own hard-earned cash rather than an in-game currency that is clear and evident that most other games have like crap like imagine that you could basically earn credits for every challenge you complete i would be happy with that imagine you could do 100 credits per challenge or 150 based on the difficult challenges i would be ecstatic that means i would be able to play challenges and i can earn credits to then buy armor but instead you're only allowing me to get credits through purchasing it with my credit card that doesn't make any sense three for three and it's so anti-consumer that it gets me annoyed jerry hook had promised us that there would be a change in the store and maybe they're still working on it but then that means close the store and don't force people to have to buy armors from you until this is done now alongside the bad we do need to talk about the straight up ugly first things first there is no co-op campaign at the launch of this new season since the announcement of halo 5 we are promised a co-op campaign locally and till this day we still do not have an definitive date of when that will actually be released chris lee who was the former project director at halo infinite the former executive producer at halo 5 and the former lead producer at halo 4 had shockingly walked away from the project during the production of halo infinite due to the issues when it comes to creating the game maybe he should have walked away earlier because the fact is a lot of the promises that were made were never kept with we still don't have a real co-op experience when it comes to halo infinite and it's upsetting because the rest of this game when it comes to gameplay mechanics is similar to what the old style halos were like 
or we're missing some key features that are staples of Halo. The roadmap states that we will have a co-op network gameplay by August, which is three months away into the battle pass. I just think this is not good enough. I think Joseph Staden is doing a great job fixing the problems that come from this game and keeping the ship afloat. But it's still annoying to see that some of these core features that are essential to Halo still are not fixed. And don't even get me started on local co-op. Split screen gameplay feels like it's in the freaking gutter for how long it's going to be until we get to see that here. Next thing I want to talk about is the buggy launch. As much as I have been excited, as well as a lot of other Halo fans have been excited, there's a lot of issues that come along with the start. Lone Wolves has only really been out for a week. There have been some problems when it comes to just the gameplay and some challenges that mean that people can't really progress as well as they want to. Last Man Standing had a bug that basically stops any sort of challenge progression that you have if you leave the game early. Even though Last Man Standing is essentially like a battle royale that if you get eliminated, you shouldn't have any penalty towards you if you leave the game. 3 for 3 had a bug in this game that basically stopped people from gaining any sort of progression. Now, so far, it seems as if they've tried to address this problem, which for the most part has been, pr been pretty successful so far, but it's not really a good look that right at the start of the gate, you have a major bug that causes people to lose all progression when it comes to developing or getting through these challenges that are already difficult to get through but the worst and most impactful bug that has hit this season has been the jamming battle rifle bug basically the way this works is that your battle rifle sometimes does not shoot when you pull the trigger or does not register when you are hitting someone with the reticle basically what this does is that it renders the battle rifle to be a straight up liability and this is a major problem when one, it's the best gun in the game and everyone's trying to get the battle rifle, or two, when the entire ranked playlists are based on the use of the battle rifle, which means that anytime you play in one of the most sweatiest game modes of all time, if you miss one bullet, it seems like you're gonna lose that fight. That is something that needs to be fixed ASAP because this is a major issue when it comes to ranked playlist as well as it's a major issue for the best gun in the game and the most iconic gun in the game. You don't want to make people not want to look for the battle rifle. You want people to look for it and to use it as much as possible. So this update needs to happen as soon as possible because I love the battle rifle and I use it all the time. And for me personally, I haven't really experienced much of the jamming bug, but I've played with people that have and it's kind of sad to see them be so angry about what happens with their favorite gun. And lastly for this segment, we do need to address the biggest concern that a lot of people have, which is the six month duration that season two comes with. Season one had a six month long season, and honestly, a lot of people, including myself, felt like there was a kind of a dragging sense that you came along with it. As in, there was fun aspects of season one for sure. I had a lot of fun. I kept playing throughout the whole entire season. But there were times where I felt like, I really wish there was another game out here. I really wish there was more cosmetics I could own. The problem with a six month long season is that you're kind of breaking the mold what most live service games do. Fortnite, Apex, which are considered to be the most popular of these live service games, usually have around three to four month of season updates. So with three for three having one major season have a six month long duration, and now their second season has, has another six month long duration, this can cause a lot of concern from the Halo community. The fact is, people are nervous that Season 2 will be the same as Season 1 when it comes to that dragging feeling. What I like to hear that Joseph Staten had mentioned in the most recent updates was that 343 was going to have these drop pods which will be dropped every month to fix some of the problems of the game as well as add new content and even new maps for every single month. I think this is a great thing to hear because it gives us more of a reason to keep playing or even at least check in for every month to see, hey, what's the new thing added? But this is also an issue because we're not really being an effective live service if this doesn't get done the correct way. My opinion is we need to look at this and say, I want to see it to believe it. I'm going to play season two and I'm going to say, hopefully there's that update that comes in every month because if it doesn't, it may drag along. The overarching question I posed at the beginning of this video was, is Halo Infinite Lone Wolves worth playing? In my opinion, the answer is yes. My first impressions of the game and the new season is that it does address the biggest concerns that most Halo fans had, which was they thought there was a lack of content at its launch, and it was true, but now they did add a lot of new content for you to play. At the very beginning, there was not a lot of content for us to enjoy, but they're finally putting in new game modes to play, new maps to play them on, and new armor cores and customizations that we can now use for our Spartan. The issue that most people have, including myself, is that there should be more content added 
to a major season update like this. Six months span seems like well than a more enough time to make more than just two maps to this content update. With that being said, 343 has stated that they will be adding more content as time progresses, so that will be something to look forward to, but like I said before, I have to see it to believe it. The biggest problems I have with this season is the fact that co-op campaign is still not available at launch, and with a long season, you really want to see 3 for 3 land right out the open gate rather than seeing it being played with some bugs. These updates need to come as soon as possible. In order to affirm the people that spend their money on Battle Pass number 2, that they are getting more bang for the buck rather than being disappointed that they wasted their money on this new battle pass. Overall, Season 2 is fun to play, and with the hopes that more content being added to the game does get me excited to see how this game progresses as time goes forward. 3 for 3 does deserve criticism, don't get me wrong. They need to add more content to the launch of this game, they need to add more things to make this game more appealing to the broader audience, and they do need to fix the major issues that are still having major problems when it comes to playing Halo Infinite. As a Halo fan, I can say that Halo Infinite will be a fantastic game as time progresses and it will gain its momentum once again. My only hope is that it doesn't take too long to reach its full potential and that will only be shown as time progresses. Thank you everyone for watching the video and please make sure if you haven't done so yet, drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Join us on social media on Discord, Twitter, and TikTok, and all those are located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace.